Destiny wasn't fair to Hai and Su. In this world of abilities and monsters, he was born powerless, his parents dead and brother in the hospital. All hope was lost until, by some miracle, an old man appeared, master of the divine arts. He was about to make Hai and Su the most overpowered being ever. In the central plain of Mirim sits a heavenly demon, Hyo Nim, the elderly leader of the heavenly demon divine cult. In his pursuit of mastering the divine arts, his spirit ended up separated from his body. He sits in the cult's building unable to communicate with his followers. The old man keeps slapping people but the hand just slips right through. On the bright side, there's no limits to the perverted acts he can do. One day, a portal opens in front of him that forcefully sucks him through. Over in the human world, we meet Hyun Su, a young man who was part of a special 1% of humanity. Two years ago, portals opened up across Earth. They spat out monsters from another world that proved too powerful for humanity to defeat. Right as humans were about to go extinct, they awakened special powers to fight back. Hyun Su is part of the 1% who remain completely powerless. Sucks to be him. In order to pay the hospital bills for his sickly younger brother, he acts as a supporter. This is basically a helper for hunters, a profession for people who use their powers to fight the portal monsters. As a powerless human, he can rarely ever find work. The hospital will kick out his brother if he's unable to pay his bills. As Hyun Su wonders if he should just end himself so the government will support his brother, a portal opens in his room. Through this portal comes the spirit of none other than Hyun Nim. While Hyun Su is shitting himself over the stranger's appearance, Hyun Nim is shocked the boy can see him. He's the first person he's been able to talk to since losing his body. Realizing the portal has brought him to another world, he heads outside to investigate. Meanwhile, Hyun Su receives a call asking for a supporter. Happy at getting some work, he prepares to leave. Right then, Hyun Nim returns. He's learned that Hyun Su is the only human he can actually interact with. Grabbing him by his collar, the old man dashes in the air while the boy screams like a little girl. Terrified by this sudden flight, Hyun Su had them land at a bus stop where he promptly barfs up his lunch. After getting on the bus, he converses with the invisible Hyun Him, while the other passengers just think he's gone cuckoo. At the sight of the portal, a group gathers of several hunters and supporters. Since this is a B-ranked portal, they need all the help they can get. Before heading in, Hyun Su runs into Choi Jung Sung a hunter who constantly bullies people for fun and has beaten Hyun Su in the past. As he walks off after telling Hyun Su not to hold them back, Hyun Nim deduces that he's a mannerless jerk. When Hyun Su complains about this though, he whacks the kid across his face. After entering the portal, the group set up camp to start figuring out the concept of this portal. Hyun Nim can already feel it and tells Hyun Su that it's water. While the boy wonders if this weird old man is psychic, the group confirms his words. Before they can act on this, pillars of water shoot up from the ground with merman monsters in them. As the group comes under attack from all sides, they're overwhelmed. Hyun Su falls victim to a giant merman that slashes straight through his armor vest. As he prepares to die, Hyun Nim finally steps in. With a single finger strike, he knocks back the monster and tells Hyun Su to just watch. Hyun Nim dodges all the merman's attacks and blows them apart one after another. He displays a special technique called Chaos Demon Flash that destroys all enemies 50 yards ahead of him. When the final boss, Merman, appears, he runs out of his energy chi and is unable to touch it. The Merman turns to a defenseless Hyun Su and leaps to attack. Hyun Nim manages to kick the boy's arms just in time to get him out of the way. Angered by his inaction, he tells Hyun Su to do something unless he wants to die. He points out the Merman's weak spots and forcefully shoves Hyun Su towards it. While he's too scared at first, Hyun Su decides there's no point in being scared at this stage. Rushing forward, he follows the instructions of Hyun Nim and defeats the merman with his bare fists. After killing the monster, a window pops up in front of Hyun Su. He's finally awakening a power. Listening to instructions, what kind of power is dead? Since the mermen keep spawning with no end, the hunters decide to retreat from this portal for now. After regrouping in the human world, the lead hunter makes an announcement. They have a new awakened among them, Hyun Su. As they're packing up to head home, Choi Jong Sun comes over to Hyun Su. When he asks what the boy's ability is, Hyun Su thinks about how much they'll make fun of it. Hyun Nim tells him to just get it out, but Hyun Su tells him to be quiet, since no one can see him. Choi thinks Hyun Su is talking to him and starts a fight. As he comes in for an attack, Hyun Su's ability activates. His body automatically obeys the orders of Hyun Nim and he dodges the attack. Moreover, Following his instructions even boosts Hyun Su's strength. When Hyun Nim orders him to perform a special technique, the ability imprints the knowledge for it straight to Hyun Su's mind. With just one punch, 
He knocks Choi out cold. The lead hunter tells Hai and Su there are consequences for attacking a teammate or not. Nobody really likes Choi, so he can get away with it this time. Making up his mind, Hai and Su turns to Hyung Nim and goes down to his knees. He wants to be the old man's student. Hyung Nim refuses. He just wants to practice martial arts after all. Hai and Su is quick to point out the issue with that though. How is he going to do that without a body? Plus, he saw how weak he was. If he doesn't get stronger, he'll die for sure. And then Hyun Nim won't even have anyone to talk to. Deciding there's no other option, he demands Hai Yun Su bow down to him nine times as a formal request. The others nearby just think he's lost his marbles when he obeys. Can't see the old man after all. At his home, Hyun Nim grills Hai Yun Su over his messy apartment and lazy attitude. He smacks the boy into cleaning up. Then he sees the portal he came here through. It's still present on one of Hai Yun Su's walls. Deciding this is the perfect place for what he plans to do, the old man pulls Hai Yun Su through. They land in a white void where Hyun Nim has his students sit down. Using his own energy, he opens Hai Yun Su's meridian pathways to allow his body to handle greater martial arts. During this process, he's shocked by how perfect the boy's body is for martial arts. Not as shocked as the boy himself, though, who plants his head through the ceiling with a jump. He's really not used to having any strength. The next day, they head to the Hunter Association for Hai Yun Su's official ranking, heading to the basement level where this will be done. As the elevator door opens, he hears a smacking sound and a scoreboard with a ridiculous value of 687. Entering the basement, Hai Yun Su learns this is one of the testing machines for Hunter rankings. A score above 900 puts one at A rank and above 1500 is S rank. The rank evaluation head, Naksu, greets Hai Yun Su. Turns out, he's quite popular now for putting down that jerk Choi. After the woman with the 687 score leaves, Hai Yun Su takes his turn. Hyung Nim teases him over his nervousness around the woman and the revealing uniform he has to wear for the tests. When he faces the machine, the boys obeys his master's instructions. Channeling the chi that's now unlocked within him, he uses his skill to follow Hyung Nim's teaching perfectly and shoots for the punch. With his very first shot, he scores over a thousand. This trend continues throughout the day as Hai Yun Su keeps scoring a thousand plus on every test he's given. Naksu is certain he'll make A rank by the end of the day. The only test that remains is a virtual battle. Before the battle, Hai Yun Su heads to the cafeteria. Here, he eats a dish he hasn't had in forever because of price hikes. Ramen. As revenge for his teasing, he messes with his teacher who can no longer eat food. Afterwards, he heads to the virtual battle room. As he prepares to walk in, the woman from before exits, clearly worn out and hurt. Entering the virtual battle room, Naksu tells Hai Yun Su how it works. Created by an s rank hunter who's also an engineer, it creates an environment and monsters for him to fight. It goes up in levels. Since Hai Yun Su is an A-rank, he'll be starting from level 4. As Hai Yun Su is plugged into the simulation, the room turns into a forest. Hyung Min recognizes the technique used for this. Almost immediately, he's attacked by wolves and other monsters. Thanks to Hyung Nim's guidance, Hai Yun Su easily dodges and defeats them all, though the two constantly bicker. When a massive ogre appears, Hyung Nim flies off. He tells Hai Yun Su this is a good chance to test his solo skills. Deciding to put in his all, he rushes forward with a kick to the ogre's leg. Though this injures the monster, it recovers almost instantly and grabs Hai Yun Su in its huge fists. While being crushed, he hears his master's voice guiding him. Using his internal energy, Hai Yun Su destroys the ogre's fists and knees its face into a pulp. Having completed level 4, he's given a short break before entering level 5. This new level turns out to be a snowy area. A woman rushes to Hai Yun Su to ask for help. This, however, turns out to be one of the monsters on this level, a vampire. After making it up to level 6, Hai Yun Su calls it quits. While leaving the testing area, he's faced by Lee Mina, a recruiter from the Hunter Association. She takes him to a meeting room and puts forth a contract for Hai Yun Su. Throughout this, Hyung Nim teases him about interacting with a beautiful woman. He does guide the boy on negotiation though, leaving Mina shocked at his knowledge despite being a newbie. Fen. Another woman shows up as well, Ha Yurak, an s rank hunter from the Red Lions Guild. She's here to recruit Hai Yun Su as well and the two women begin laying out the perks each of their organizations have. As they argue against each other, Hai Yun Su comes to a decision. Meanwhile, on Mount Ilja, the b rank portal with the water concept has turned into a disaster. The inside is now a whole ocean and more and more dangerous monsters keep appearing. It turns out, Hai Yun Su's decision was to take neither of the contracts. He plans to check out any other offers he'll get first as well. Back at home, he trains with Hyung Nim in the portal void. 
The old man teaches him about the skills of his cult, which will take severely harsh training to master. From footwork to flight, and even a strike so fast it can't be seen. The old man shows high on Su techniques he can't even begin to understand. With the heavenly demon as his master though, he'll definitely learn them. Hyun Su ends up collapsing of exhaustion after trying to learn an advanced technique without mastering the basics. Hyung Nim scolds him for this and the day's training ends. After paying his brother's hospital bills, Hyun Su heads into town to buy some ramen. At the store, he meets Yoon, a girl who lost her parents a couple of years ago much like himself. She works at the store part-time now to support her younger siblings. After talking to her a bit, Hyun Su buys a ramen packet and heads home. As he eats the noodles, he once again teases his master over not being able to eat. Angered by his words, Hyung Nim grabs his hand and puts it in his mouth. To both their shock, it turns out he can actually touch food if it's through Hyun Su's hands. Overjoyed by this discovery, Hyun Nim demands that his disciple go ahead and spoon feed him. He looks happy though. He also asks to turn on the TV so he can study this world. What? Ghosts can enjoy nice things? When Hyun Su turns it on though, he sees a disturbing news report. The portal from Mount Ilja has broken out and the mermen and other monsters from it are running wild in the city. When he sees the area where the rampage is taking place, Hyun Su's heart drops. It's where his friend Yu leaves. Guess. It's hero time. As fast as he can, Hyun Su exits his home and calculates the fastest path to the disaster. He could get there within 20 minutes if he could go in a straight line, but the buildings are blocking him. Luckily, he just recently finally learned one of Hyun Nim's techniques, Heavenly Demon Flight. Using this, he takes to the air, Hall asking to save his pal. At the sight of a monster's attack, mermen and sea serpents alike are being held back by Choi Hyunwoo. The Black Panther and his comrades. Despite their best efforts, they're overwhelmed. Right as they're prepared to be eaten by a sea serpent, they hear a voice. With a war cry that reveals the name of his technique, Hyun Su jumps in and smashes the serpent with a chi-fueled strike. Though he managed to damage the serpent, it's not defeated just yet. Guided by Hyung Nim. Hyun Su fights it, though his body is growing tired. Following his master's advice, he uses his chi to soothe his body and continues fighting. As an opening presents itself, Hyun Su shoots towards the underside of the serpent's jaw. He'll end this with one final blow to its weak spot, the chin. Unfortunately, the serpent manages to move out of the way and bat away Hyun Su at the last moment. Hyung Nim sees a sorceress as controlling it, allowing it to counterattack and heal. As Hyun Su lays unconscious, Hai Yurak of the Red Lion's Guild arrives and engages the serpent in his place. Hyun Nim carries his disciple away and waits for him to recover. When Hyun Su awakens, he's angered by what Hyun Nim tells him. Proclaiming that the serpent is his prey alone, he shoots back towards the battle before Hyun Su can leap away. Hyun Nim stops him. The heavenly demon tells him he may as well leave things to Hai Yurak now since she can easily handle them. This, however, only stokes the fire in Hyun Su's heart. Turning to his master, he pours his heart out. These monsters took his parents from him. They put his little brother in critical condition. How can he possibly turn his back to that when he finally has the power to fight back? Moved by the resolve he didn't believe his pupil had, Hyun Nim tells him there is one way for him to win. However, there will be consequences for it later. With Hyun Su's acceptance of this, Hyun Nim starts the process for giving him immense power. It's a sort of temporary state where he'll be able to access all the power he has the potential to one day wield. Over with Ha Yurak. She's managed to finish off the sorceress who is healing the mermen and serpent. With the woman finally gone, the serpent can be defeated. Ha uses her fire powers to blow away the evacuated buildings in the area. With this, the serpent no longer has anywhere to hide. As she prepares a final attack to finish off the last monster in front of her, her hand is grasped by another. Hyun Su has arrived. After convincing Ha Yurak to let him handle this, Hyun Su shoots towards the serpent at a speed even she can't see, as he begins attacking the beast with the secret techniques of the heavenly demon style. Hyun Nim is amazed. He may be the one that helped him attain this state, but even the spirit can't believe just how vast the boy's potential is. Moreover, he somehow even absorbed the muscle memory of the heavenly demon itself, something that should be impossible. As Hyun Su lays waste to the serpent from all angles with technique after technique, Ha Yurak watches on, awed by the display. She knew he was strong, but this is ridiculous. As she watches, she's joined by Lee Mina, who rushed to the scene when she learned Hyun Su was involved in the battle. Both of them can't believe the sheer power and skill being shown by the boy they wish to recruit. Eventually, the consequences Hyun Nim mentioned finally kick in. As his body gives out, Hyun Su hacks up blood and falls to the ground. 
Both the spectating women rushed towards him, worried for his health. His master would have helped, but the old geezer's too busy being jealous. How the hell did the kid land two beautiful women without even doing anything? Later, Hyam Su wakes up in the hospital. Hyam Nim instantly starts scolding him for using his power so recklessly. Just then, Ha Yurak and Lee Mina enter his room and offer greetings, shocking the young man. Yurak and Mina constantly compete with each other for Hyun Su's attention. They reveal an item drop he has claimed since he defeated the serpent. A monster heart. An item that can vastly increase one's strength depending on how they consume it. Naturally, they then fight over which of them can give him a more efficient method of consumption. Throughout this, Kyung Nim remains salty. Seriously, how does a stupid kid have this much game? Later, they each offer him revised contracts for joining either the Red Lions or the Association. With his clearly vast potential, he'll easily reach S rank so they both want him for their organizations. And perhaps for more personal reasons as well. Hyun Su can't help but be swayed by Ha Yurek and turns Mina down. He does, however, request her help with something as he can't move too well thanks to his injuries. Hyung Nim's quick to point out that the kid's real shameless for doing that. Over with Hyun Su's friend Yoon. She's preparing breakfast for her younger siblings before going to her job. While doing so, she hears a terrified scream from the bathroom. Turning, she sees her little sister in the clutches of a merman, one who found its way into their bathroom through the sewers. As Yoon runs to stab the merman with her kitchen knife, he swats her away with ease, because obviously, right as he prepares to end the child in its grasp, Lee Minov arrives and pummels the creature with her telekinesis. Never seen a kettlebell look that threatening before, goddamn. After defeating the merman, she reveals that Hyun Su requested her to come here. Over with Hyun Su, he's made a miraculous recovery, shocking his doctors at its speed. Plot armor baby. Wait, what? Oh yeah, like internal energy and stuff. There's reasons for it. Returning to his apartment, he and his master head into the portal void. Here, the master student duo discuss his goals and the monster heart he received. Hyam Su tells Hyung Nim about how he and Yoon lost their parents two years ago when the portals appeared. He wants to make sure nobody else suffers a tragedy like that again. At Hyung Nim's guidance, he prepares to consume the monster heart. With Hyung Nim's method, they'll receive 70% of its power. This will grant him 140 years worth of internal energy. Back in the human world, Li Mina arrives at Hyun Su's apartment to tell him what happened at Yoon's. Stepping into the unlocked apartment, she's shocked by the sight of the portal inside. Staring at the portal, Mina comes to the most logical conclusion. Mold, yeah. Mold. That's gotta be what it is. Hyun Su's a filthy bachelor, so it only makes sense. Right, right? Before she can get around to doing something about it. She receives a call and has to leave. Luckier. Honestly. Inside the portal, Kyuk Nim guides his student through the process to absorb the monster heart. Though he calls it the elixir. By using the method of drawing out the elixir's energy suggested by him. Hyun Su slowly but steadily absorbs more of it than expected. As he reaches 70% absorption, his nose and ears start bursting with blood, but he keeps going. Continuing to push, he hits 80%, then 90%. With one final push of assistance from Hyun Nim, he reaches 100% absorption rate. His body undergoes a massive change, turning into an extreme yang physique. Along with massive heat resistance, his unique skill levels up. He can now learn the techniques of a specific person once a day. Back in the human realm, hospitals have been filled up to capacity. The escaped mermen have ended up in many people's homes like Yoon. What's worse is that even those who have survived the attacks have fallen into comas with no signs of why. Two such people are Yoon's siblings. After consuming the elixir, Hyun Su sleeps through a full two and a half days. When he finally awakens, Hyun Nim and he begin bickering as is the norm for the master and student. When he hears about Hyun Su's new abilities, the old man is saltier than ever before. That ability is a damn cheat code. Where's the decades of training he had to go through? Later, Hyam Su meets Yoon at the hospital and learns about her comatose siblings. Relating to her situation, he takes her to his brother, Hyam Tae's room. He'd been comatose ever since the accident that killed their parents two years ago. When he sees the boy, Hyam Nam reveals he can feel a strange energy coming from him. Upon closer examination, he can sense a curse seal on his heart. While Hyam Su reels at this information, Hyun Nim tells him there's a way around the curse. There is a catch though. After Yoon leaves, Hyun Su asks his master what the ways to fight the curse. He reveals it's a sorcery technique created by a heavenly demon, severing heavenly language. Unfortunately, Hyun Su hasn't advanced far enough in his training to access the technique. Hyun Su then remembers his new skill, 
the ability to imitate any one technique per day from a specific person. Using this skill, he imitates Hyun Nim's severing heavenly language and uses it on Hyun Tae. To his confusion, it ends up failing despite seeming like it was working at first. Hyun Nim tells him this is simply because the curse was placed by a very strong being. Hyun Su just doesn't have enough energy to fight it off yet. Later, he visits the hospital where Yoon's siblings are. After getting a good look at many of the comatose patients, Hyun Nim concludes the reason for their conditions. Mermen possess very strong yin energy. For people whose spirits naturally lean towards yin energy, coming into contact with the mermen causes their energy to mutate into cold energy. This puts them in a hibernation-like state. The fix is actually quite simple. Hyun Su just has to flood the victim's body with his yang energy to draw out the cold energy and then burn it away. Turning to Yoon's younger brother, Hyun Su attempts to perform this technique. After drawing out the child's excess yin energy, Hyun Su does something that shocks Hyun Nim. He absorbs it. As soon as he does this, his body yet again undergoes a change. It changes from extreme yang to harmonious yin and yang type. When he asks Hyun Nim about this, the spirit is awed by just how far Hyun Su's potential and unique skill can stretch. The harmonious yin and yang body is one that synchronizes both energy types to take one beyond all normal limits. Putting that aside for now, Hyam Su sees his act worked. Yoon's little brother is awake and healthy. With his ability to treat the comatose patients confirmed, Hyun Su goes on a healing spree. One after another, he treats every victim of the mermen he can find. As the number of people he's treated increases, news of his actions spreads like wildfire. Lee Mina and Ha Yurak both learn of the situation and are amazed by him yet again. As the people begin looking up to Hyun Su as their savior, Hyun Nim tells him he should get used to this. As a heavenly demon, he'll always be quite exalted. That night, Yurak tells Hyun Su the association has requested he head to their hospital as well. They've offered a large reward, which she tells him he can have in its entirety as part of his contract. The next day, Hyun Su is cooking ramen for Hyun Nim as usual when he receives a frantic call from Ha Yurak. She yells at him to get out of his apartment at once, before he can ask anything. Hyun Nim warns him of a powerful force heading their way at a great speed. Rushing outside, Hyun Su is greeted by the sight of a white-haired man landing violently from the sky above. As they lock eyes with each other, he utters a single word and flies at Hyun Su with his fist raised. Lee Mina and Ha Yurak suspect the mysterious figure attacking Hyun Su is Haksun who can move at supersonic speeds. Yurek heads out, planning to battle him. Meanwhile, the association requests the Azuri Dragon team to prepare the Mirror World Divine Item. Back to the fight, Hyung Nim notes that although Hyunsu has grown at an exponential rate and achieved the evolutionary realm, the opponent he faces is far stronger, even more so than Ha Yurek. He remarks that this white-haired man has achieved at least the Supreme Peak Realm, the one where Hyung Nim himself descends from. Shit just got real. The battle continues. At first, Hyunsu blocks Haxon's energy blasts with ease. However, the tide soon turns when the latter uses a skill called body transmutation, turning his fist into shards of metal and striking the former with it. Hyunsu is sent flying, not being able to feel his right arm anymore. Haxon closes in, getting ready to strike him with another supersonic Mach 5 punch. Hyunsu doesn't wait around and tries to counter by activating his heavenly demon flight. However, it's to no avail as he is once again sent flying by Haxon's blow. Haxon is just about to land the finishing blow, praising Hyunsu for lasting this long. Just then, he hears a proclamation. What are you talking about? You bastard. I don't understand what you are blabbering about. Actual chills. This proclamation is followed by a burst of light covering Hyunsu. He shouts out peace through, seed impact, and launches a counterattack. Hyunsu's attack lands, breaking through Haxon's reinforced metal arms. However, he instantly recovers with his silver pulse. Hyung Nim tells his disciple to not let Haxon recover and use wood impact. Hyunsu's listening to instructions activates and he lets it rip at this opponent. However, the latter has vanished and somehow comes out below the former. Haxon begins a flurry of attacks, but Hyunsu avoids all and slashes him. Haxon suffers a serious blow and is not able to fully recover, even with his powers. Hyunsu then tries to take the battle to an empty location, so he can go all out without worrying about civilians. What a nice guy. The fight takes to the top floor of an empty school building, where Haxon once again takes control of the fight. Coming up behind Hyunsu, he strikes him with a massive blow, sending him flying through the floors right down to the bottom one. Haxon then charges a massive ball of energy, eradicating the school building and seemingly, Hyunsu along with it. 
just as Haxon thinks his victory is assured. Hyunsu rises from the rubble, clad in a flashing blue light. He vows to put him down once and for all and concentrates his energy into one final attack. However, it mysteriously dissipates. Shocked, Haxon relies on brute force and charges at Hyunsu. The latter easily dodges and teeming with energy, strikes the former with a fatal blow that sends him flying. Five days ago, Hyunsu was training with Hyung Nim. During this, the master told his disciple that while the internal power within him is great, he hasn't been able to foster it properly. It is only through real life or death fights that Hyunsu will be able to realize his true potential. Back to the present, Haxon has managed to get up once again. His body, fully reinforced by his silver pulse. On the other hand, Hyunsu seems to be barely holding on. Charging head on, Haxon lands a Mach 5 super punch on his opponent. It is a clean hit, one that brings Hyunsu to the ground. About to see his disciple get his head take off, Hyung Nim tells him to use the Heavenly Demon Soul Shed a technique that lets one separate the soul from the body for some time. Hyunsu succeeds and his body changes trajectory, avoiding Haxon's attack. He then tries to hit his opponent with a wood impact, one that he won't be able to dodge. Just as Hyunsu is about to land the deciding blow, he runs out of energy. Damn, crap, timing. Proclaiming that this is the end, Haxon uppercuts Hyunsu with his reinforced fists. In his prime, Hyun Nim was fighting a monster that killed all his comrades. His internal energy dried out, he still held his ground. Using a technique called Heavenly Spiritual Body that lets one borrow power from nature and still fight without any internal energy, Hyung Nim defeated the monster. Back to the present, the Azuri Dragon team arrives at the location of the fight, clouded in smokes. As the smoke settles, they are shocked to see that Hyunsu is not only still alive, but also going blow for blow in hand-to-hand -hand combat with the S-rank Haxon. However, this doesn't last long. The white-haired monster of a man is finally able to charge up energy again and launches a gigantic beam at Hyunsu, making a wide hole in the ground. The Azuri Dragon team is left speechless, contemplating how they will fight this monster. Meanwhile, Hyung Nim saves his disciple just in time and he only gets injured instead of dying. He tells Hyunsu to run away as he can no longer take it, but he refuses. Sigma Behavior Having achieved listening to instructions level 3. Hyunsu can mimic one per day of his master's abilities. He activates Heavenly Spiritual Body and launches a massive energy attack at Haxon. The latter responds and launches his own energy beam. However, the Mirror World Divine Item has been activated and absorbs both of their attacks, breaking afterwards. Everyone is shocked that it only broke after one use. Just then, Ha Yurek explosively makes an entrance to the battlefield, shouting out Haxon's name. As she prepares to take him on, a portal opens and two mysterious figures descend. The mysterious figures are revealed to be S rank number 8 and number 9, Divine Sword Yamamoto Takeshi and Magician of Time and Space Jill Lordeman. Both of them work under Haxon, who is S rank number 2 in the Germanese guild. They apologize for their guild leader's behavior and promise compensation, leaving through the portal. Just like that, Ha Yurek is shocked that Hyunsu was able to keep up with the legendary Haxon and wonders how strong he has gotten. They head to the hospital, where Hyunsu is told that he will be fully recovered in just one day. Man is speed. He then heads home. On the way, he sees that the area of the fight is magically fully restored, and also meets his team leader Lee Mai Na. People in the area also cheer for Hyunsu for saving their neighborhood, making him feel better as he was worried about the consequences of the fight. Meanwhile, a mysterious figure in the shadows looks on as his scheme, the parallel plan is at 72% completion. Haxon's guild has issued an international apology for his illegal infiltration of Korea, and it's all over the news. Watching the headlines is one of Hyunsu's secret admirers. This unknown entity seems to have hardening abilities just like Haxon and promises to one day beat the person he also admires. Meanwhile, Hyunsu is arriving for his first official expedition with the Red Lion. There, he meets some of his favorite hunters and totally fanboys over them, causing Hyung Nim to strike him. The master tells his disciple that he is the successor of the heavenly demon and that he shouldn't prostate himself for everyone. Have some self-respect dude. Hyunsu then meets Ha Yurek, who asks whether he still wants to work for her now that he has proved his skills as S rank by fighting Haxon. He assures her to be the case, and then goes to change into his expedition outfit. Finally, Ha Yurek announces the expedition's commencement. The quest, subjugating the fragment of paradise. Ha Yurek gives a motivational speech, rallying her troops to prepare for battle towards the paradise portal. 
It is revealed that the portal got its name Paradise as anyone who goes in, faces death. Meanwhile, the mysterious figure referred to as Night Nim by his white-haired female underling is informed about the Red Lion's arrival. He announces their death, along with all of Korea, and teleports somewhere. Back over to the guild's expedition, they break through the portal into Paradise. Hyunsoo and Hyung Nim seem to be separated from the group and are alone in a vast desert. While the two discuss whether it's just an optical illusion, Hyunsoo tries to get in contact with his guild. As they look around, they see another person with them. It is the secret admirer who wanted to have a piece of Hyunsoo, unbeknownst to them. He is struggling to fight a sand monster in the desert, and is about to die. Just then, Hyunsoo intervenes and kills the monster. Let's hope he doesn't regret this. Ha Yurak is flying around over an endless sea and wonders what magic caused everyone to be separated on entrance. She decides that looking around is pointless and activates Inferno Night, evaporating a part of the sea to look inside. Yurak's hunch was correct, and she sees a mysterious portal underneath. On another side of paradise, all the A ranks, including the Steel God of Death, have met their death. Looking down on them is the Night Nim, who remarks that they died without even facing the Gulak. His white-haired underling informs him that she has paired Hyunsu with the Sorcerer King Anthropy, who should come out victorious against him. Back over to Hyunsu, he is wondering if this person he saved, the Aegis Guild leader, Choi Yi Huk always had a talkative personality. Choi tells Hyunsu that he is a fan, and has followed his adventures throughout. All the while, he seems to wonder why the former keeps looking at the sky, and what exactly is listening to instructions that he wrote as one of his skills. Hyung Nim warns Hyunsu that Choi seems to hold animosity for him and to be careful. Keeping an eye out for each other, the two come up to a portal. Start of a bromance perhaps. Outside the paradise portal, Lee Mai Na is waiting with her team. They are here for backup in case, the combined raid by Red Lions and the Aegis Guild fails. Meanwhile inside Paradise, Hyunsu and Choi contemplate going inside the mysterious portal. They decide to go, and are teleported on top of a castle wall. The two of them are shocked to see that inside the portal lies an entire civilization. Choi gives Hyunsu a signal flare to use in need, and the two head in different directions. The latter wonders if his master was too hasty in his judgment of the former. The naivety will be the end of him. Inside the castle Hyunsu is headed for lies the sorcerer king Anthropy, or at least his bones do. Meanwhile, Ha Yurek is taking on countless monsters in Obel's Sea in a lonely battle. The portal she saw earlier has now disappeared, but the monsters keep coming in waves, one after the other. Suddenly, a gigantic whale-like creature appears and is about to slam into her. Back over to Choi and Hyunsu, the former is looking for valuable items using a skill that he used to obtain his rock breaker equipment. The latter, however, isn't so lucky. As Hyunsu is looking around, the Sorcerer King Anthropy appears in front of him, wondering if he is looking to enter the Gate of Light. Anthropy is nicer than C seems and invites the duo inside for tea. He is able to see Hyung Nim, much to the latter's surprise. The Sorcerer King, or rather his skeleton, remarks that it's been over 2,000 years since he has been here. His memories are vague and remembers that the country he was king of was once a prosperous one. However, everything went to hell when the Gates of Light appeared, causing monsters to run rampant and bring ruin. Anthropy tells of his endeavors and how he used all the magic he could possibly muster to try to kill those monsters. As this is going on, Gulag has awoken and is feasting on the dead bodies of Red Lions, a rank adventurers. It is a gigantic monster with fangs and a rhino-like horn on his head, all the while having wings. Truly the stuff of nightmares. A portal opens, overlapping its location with Ha Yurak's location who is already fighting the whale-like monster from earlier. Meanwhile, the Sorcerer King asks Hyunsu to put him out of his 2,000 years old misery and asks the latter to kill him. Say what now? Upon hearing this, the Master Disciple duo is shocked and wonders how they will even kill an already dead creature. Back over to Ha Yurek, she sees the dead bodies of all her comrades coming over to the overlapped location. Angered, Yurek activates the Firebird mode, wiping out the whale-like monster and all the pests in sight. Only her and Gulag remain, as they prepare for a deciding battle. Enveloped in flames, Ha Yurak charges at Gulag in her firebird mode. Meanwhile, Hyung Nim wonders why Anthropy can't just kill himself. The latter demonstrates, smashing his own skull. To the Master Disciple duo's surprise, it instantly recovers. Suicide is not an option for the Sorcerer King. Hyung Nim agrees to killing Anthropy, only if the latter tells them how to get out of there. As this is going on, Aegis leader Choi is taken to an empty antique room of sorts by his skill. He enters the site, but is attacked by the stone figures there that have come to life. Back to Anthropy, he tells Hyung Nim 
that he doesn't know how to get out. If he did, he would have gotten out of there long ago. However, Anthropy remarks that he has something that may be of worth to Hyunsu and his master. He takes the two to a room, at the center of which is a crystal ball of sorts that he calls a marble, telling Hyunsu to touch the ball to reveal his greatest desire. However, it is a trap. Who could have thought? The marble starts to suck out his energy, not letting Hyunsu go. Anthropy tells the duo that he is the one who absorbed the souls of his people to defeat the monsters, resulting in him being all alone and trapped there. He knows how to leave but needs more energy. The Sorcerer King thanks Hyunsu for bringing thousands of souls for him to absorb. Hyung Nim tells the panicked Hyunsu to calm down, and instructs him to use the Heavenly Demon dominating stride. Everything kneels down in the face of the Heavenly Demon, he proclaims. Epic. Just then, a massive explosion happens. The Heavenly Demon dominating stride brings the Sorcerer King to his knees. Hyung Nim remarks that is how everyone should be in front of a Heavenly Demon. Hyunsu strikes Anthropy with wood impact, shattering his skull. Oof. Meanwhile, Choi struggles with the stone-turned beasts and has to retreat. As he is running, he falls into a series of traps, almost getting pierced by spikes. Barely managing to live, Choi reaches a gigantic crystal and strikes it with his rock breaker. Meanwhile with Hyunsu, the Sorcerer King is back, having recovered as if nothing ever happened. The latter launches a barrage of energy beams, forcing the former to use Heavenly Demon Flight to avoid them. Despite this showcase, Hyung Nim is unfazed and continues to mock Anthropy. Enraged, the Sorcerer King vows to kill Hyunsu to prove his dominance. Cutting over to Choi again, he has struck open the large crystal and begins to absorb what lies inside. What he finds inside is a small fragment possessing immense power, it being Anthropy's life vessel. Over with Hyunsu, he uses the rubble created by the Sorcerer King's barrage of attacks to propel himself, activating the technique Heavenly Spiritual Body. Hyunsu charges head-on towards Anthropy. This attack cuts Anthropy in half, turning him to dust. Before he vanishes, the Sorcerer King remarks that he wouldn't have lost if someone didn't get to his life vessel. Meanwhile, Choi has absorbed the power bursting out of Anthropy's life vessel and is surging with life. The monsters he had to run from earlier, Choi is able to take out with a single energy beam. He remarks that his body is now the strongest in the world. Is it though? Back to Hyunsu, he wants to go inside the marble as he felt the screams of countless souls, wanting to be freed, when he touched it earlier. Hyunsu wants to go alone without Hyung Nim, but the latter forces him to take him along as they are a package deal. The two enter the marble, where they are transported to the Sorcerer King's country as it used to be. At the moment the gates of light are opening, they remark that it is Anthropy's memories they are witnessing. The king from the time is heroic, saving his people from the monsters that have appeared and getting cheered for his efforts. However, he grows old and weary, losing his strength as time goes on. That's life. The king no longer has the strength to handle the monsters alone. He is left wondering what good the country will be without him there to protect it, reaching the conclusion that he needs necromancy to gather souls and obtain great power. Yet another part of the king is against this idea. He stands at a moral dilemma, what kind of king he would be if he sacrificed his citizens, but what would the citizens do without his kingship? This dilemma causes a split inside Anthropy and he is left at war with himself. Schizo Arc Just then, one of the king's informants lets him know of another gate of light opening and wants him to handle it. This is the breaking point. Anthropy loses it and kills the informant, using his blood to cast the necromancy spell, absorbing the souls of all his people. He is easily able to beat the dragon that had come out of the earlier gate. Back to Hyunsu, he is overwhelmed by the cries of the souls that want him to join them. Had it not been for Hyung Nim, Hyunsu would be toast. As he is just about to break, Hyunsu hears someone talk. It is coming from a light that wants to guide him somewhere. Hyunsu follows and arrives in front of a mysterious figure. The light guiding him is none other than the Sorcerer King's soul itself. Isn't bro dead twice now? Hyunsu is greeted by King Anthropy who has been waiting for 30-24 years for this moment. He reveals that at the moment the necromancy spell was cast, the side of Anthropy that wanted nothing to do with sacrificing souls split apart, getting pulled along with the absorbed souls. However, this good side was able to create a separate world inside the marble, where some of the souls were able to spend their time in peace and prosperity. Anthropy informs Hyunsu about Choi's absorption of the evil king's life essence, and how he is no longer human but the incarnation of evil himself. Telling him to be very, the king tells Hyunsu to make him the instructor for his listening to instructions skill. Shocked at his knowledge, Hyunsu does so. Hyung Nim got to be jealous. Cutting over to Ha Yurek, she puts her all into attacking Gulak, but he is unscathed. 
back to Hyunsu, the sorcerer king tells him that he has to master mana, the raw energy of nature, to release the trapped souls. The former instructs Hyunsu to manipulate mana and return the pain of the souls he feels to free them, which he does by making use of his skill. Meanwhile in the real world, Choi has wandered onto Hyunsu's unconscious body and prepares to strike it down. Hyunsu casts the spell incantation disappear, finally liberating all the souls from their misery. Anthropy, before disappearing, tells Hyung Nim that his disciple is an unprecedented genius. The souls liberated, Hyunsu wakes up just in time to avoid Choi's incoming attack. Claiming that it would have been boring like that anyways, Choi prepares to launch another attack. However, Hyunsu moves first and sends him flying with a punch, shocking his opponent who is not able to see him execute the attack. Choi chalks it up to a fluke and charges his fist again. This time, the two clash blows. Hyunsu is victorious in this collision as Choi's rock breaker is torn apart. Not even giving the latter time to react, the former strikes him down with a flurry of punches and kicks, gaining a one-sided victory. Hyung Nim remarks that Hyunsu seems to have touched the supreme realm of power, growing even stronger than Haxon for a bit there, but is starting to grow weaker. Turns out that mana, unlike Chi, doesn't empower one for long. It would be too broken otherwise. Suddenly, the sky splits open. In this opening, Ha Yurak is fighting Gulak, claiming that even the Sorcerer King would not have been able to beat Gulak. Night Nim is angered at his plans getting disrupted. He finally decides to make a move. His white-haired underling appears behind Hyunsu. Bloodlusted, she begins to attack him. Hyunsu, who is beginning to combine mana with his techniques, avoids her and launches a counterattack using Seed Impact. However, the mysterious girl dodges everything he throws at her with ease. Just then, Hyunsu uses a modified wood impact that is about to catch her, but she is saved. Night Nim appears and charges at Hyunsu. The latter blocks, but the sheer impact force the former's punch sends him flying. The white-haired girl spawns a spike platform behind Hyunsu's trajectory, catching him on the impact. Ouch. Meanwhile, Ha Yurak releases her firebird mode. Swearing on her fallen comrade's life, she vows to destroy Gulak. Yurak begins to charge a technique that will use her own life force as collateral to execute. Burn it all, Plasma, she yells out and fires away at Gulak. At the same time, reinforcements have arrived outside the portal. Having come to help Ha Yurak, it is none other than the White Wolf, Haxon. Haxon has brought his guild members in S rank number 8 and 9, Takishi and Lord Mon, along with him. Inquiring about Hyunsu, the White Wolf remarks that if he is inside, then all will be fine character development let's go. Meanwhile inside the portal, Gulag and Ha Yurak launch their strongest charged attacks at each other. Hyunsu, who is fighting with Night Nim, activates his skill Yin Yang Demon. Avoiding each other's blows, the two appear to be at an impasse for now. Cutting over to the monster fight, the clash between Yurak and Gulag seems to have ended. The Red Lion's leader is falling into the depths of the sea. Her hair having lost its crimson brightness has turned pitch black. In her thoughts, Yurak apologizes to her captain for not being able to keep her promise. As this is going on, the energy levels inside Paradise have exceeded the limit, and all the portals begin to overlap. Night Nim bids his farewell to Hyunsu, telling him that if he survives, they will meet again, next time, in his real form. The former then cuts through a portal with a sword and vanishes. Coughing up blood and wondering how they are going to escape, Hyunsu spots the sword that Night Nim used to cut the portal, left behind. Rookie mistake. Paradise begins to fall apart. Hyunsu tries swinging the sword in every way imaginable. Suddenly, he manages to open a portal and jumps, landing in the desert where he started. There, Hyunsu sees that a portal for the location of the castle tower, where it has merged with where Ha Yurak's fight took place. With conviction of saving his guild leader, he decides to head inside. Meanwhile, Night Nim heads back to his hiding, where he receives healing for his injuries. However, he is informed that if his plan fails, Rook Nim will punish him by death. Angered, Night Nim begins to head out in search of the singularity. Elsewhere, a voluptuous and sassy woman named Bishop Nim laughs at Night Nim for missing the singularity, despite it being right in front of his face. She then receives the corpse of Aegis leader Choi, who has absorbed the Sorcerer King's life essence, as he may prove of use sometime in the future. A portal opens in front of Bishop Nim and she walks in, expressing her hope for Park Hyunsu to find the oasis. In the outside world, everyone is worried what will happen if Paradise reaches Portal Impact. As the world is engulfed in panic, Hyunsu's coma-ridden brother moves a finger ever so slightly. Back inside Paradise, Hyunsu keeps going round and round in the same desert, no matter which portal he goes through. 
about to give up. He realizes that his latest destination isn't a desert at all, it's an oasis. The water there mysteriously shows no reflection, letting the master disciple duo come to understand that it's another portal. Fed up with going in circles, they go inside it. Tsu wakes up in his bed at home. His parents and brother are alive and well. As the family heads out in their car, they take a shortcut. However, the ground underneath erupts, blasting them all. Later, Hyunsu wakes up in the hospital, having suffered heavy injuries. After inquiring about his family, he finds out that his parents are dead. Upon learning this, Hyunsu breaks down. Not like this. Suddenly, a voice shouts out his name, telling Hyunsu to get a hold of himself. It is Hyungnim, who has taken drastic measures to awaken him, basically just beating him up, lol. Just then, another voice calls out. A mysterious white-haired being, clad in a white and gold robe stands there, calling Hyung Nim an unexpected variable. The mysterious man asks Hyun Soo and Hyung Nim why there are two of them in his presence, as he only summoned one person. The two pay him no attention, bickering amongst themselves. Angered, the man is about to move but is struck down by Hyung Nim, who orders him not to do anything until permitted. Hyun Soo is shocked how his master's attacks work. The man reveals to be the one responsible for making and maintaining the world around and is also the one who showed Hyunsu his painful dream. He can read his mind and tells him that he wanted Ha Yurak to come there so he could steal her body, but his will have to do. Enraged, Hyunsu attacks but can't touch the man. Through their contact, the man has entered Hyunsu's body and pushes his soul out. However, his celebration for this feat is cut short as Hyung Nim interferes. Hyunsu re-enters his body and the man is pushed out. Enraged that his warning was ignored, Hyung Nim prepares to strike him down but is stopped by his disciple, who wonders if killing the man will just trap them in paradise forever. The mysterious man then reveals himself to be Palvishan, the ancestral dragon who should have been subjugated a year ago. He survived by breaking his soul into fragments and hiding away but he is running out of time and will disappear in a day. Palvishan informs Hyunsu that he fought Night Nim at only half his power. As he is now, he won't be able to do anything against him at full power, let alone the kings. Palvishan tells the master disciple duo that his time is up, as the world around him begins to collapse. He bids them farewell, and opens a portal behind them that will take them out. Palvishan tells Hyunsu to breathe mana as he walks out, considering this piece of advice as a parting gift. Following his advice, Hyunsu begins to inhale massive amounts of mana, overflowing with it. To adapt to this power, his body begins to change, an immense power taking him over. Hyunsu feels the same way now as he felt when he got a temporary heavenly demon body. In a bursting flash of light, he attains one of the highest levels of martial arts, the three flowers peak bloom. Meanwhile, Hyung Nim is transported to an empty space where a mysterious and curious voice talks to him, unable to reveal its identity. The voice doesn't get the peaceful talk with Hyung Nim that it wanted. The latter begins to wildly launch attacks, forcing the former to let him go on his way. Back to Hyunsu, his body has completed its transformation. Listening to instructions has leveled up, as well as the level of his yin-yang body. Through this, he has achieved acceleration, letting him listen to instructions more effectively on activation, as well as being able to imitate his instructor's skills twice a day. Not only this, Hyunsu has received increased effectiveness in his attacks, intimidation, higher resistance, as well as the knowledge of all the heavenly demons so far. Almost forgot, he can now fly too. Actual hacks, huh? Reunited with his master inside paradise and stronger than ever, Hyunsu rushes for Ha Yurak. After flying around the area, Hyunsu finally finds the battered and bruised Ha Yurak, having lost her hair's crimson. Meanwhile, the conditions for a portal impact have been met. Waiting for it outside, the reinforcements are confused as to why it hasn't happened yet. Just then, they sense something coming out of the portal and prepare for battle. Everyone is relieved to see that it's no monsters, but Hyunsu, holding Ha Yurak in his arms. As he gets her medical attention, Haxon commends him for getting stronger. Hyunsu is shocked to find out that he can understand him, even though he is talking in German. Damn, the cheat code just doesn't stop. As this is going on, the Paradise Portal closes, as the legendary raid is finally complete. Expressing his disappointment in not being able to test out Hyunsu's newfound powers right away, Haxon, along with his subordinates, returns to Germany. Elsewhere, Portal Strategy Commission's chairman and S-rank hunter number one, Robin Ord Mom is awoken from his meditation. It's Park Hyunsu again. He proclaims, the boss appears, let's go. Robin's subordinate informs him of the raid being a success. The two concur that Park Hyunsu is the singularity. 
Two years ago, Robin lost his captain but gained a vision of the future. The apocalypse dragon Desky would wreak havoc on the world, but the three singularities would fight its terror. The S-Rank's leader decides to go to Korea himself before they make a move. Just then, he is interrupted by the first singularity, the 17-year-old Isaac, who wants to go along with him. Meanwhile in Korea, the recent incident has caused protests to break out, demanding answers from the government. Over with Hyunsu, he wonders if he should report the black portal in his apartment to the association, as it has no monsters, but an open field. Hyung Nim tells him to hold off on that as they will be using it to learn the remaining six heavenly demon techniques, those that use aerial combat, as a foundation. Finally, the good shit. Elsewhere, Robin meets with the research chief of the S ranks, Anderson. They are trying to replicate some of Germany's technology. Robin tries to leave without Isaac, but the latter manages to pester him into bringing him along after all. Together, the two head for Korea. Back to Hyunsu, he is training in the open field from earlier where Hyung Nim asks what he thinks a heavenly demon even is. Suddenly, they feel something with incredible energy heads their way. It is Robin and Isaac, who have somehow managed to find Hyunsu. Robin and Hyunsu sit in the latter's room exchange pleasantries. Isaac is acting rude, causing the former to strike him. The latter feels that the two have the same relationship as his own with Hyung Nim. Explaining the purpose of his visit, Robin invites Hyunsu to be a member of the Portal Strategy Committee. Elsewhere, Night Nim is being punished by a towering man for his plans failing, as well as missing the singularity right in front of him. Deserved? No. The latter tells the former that the king has given him a final chance to capture Park Hyunsu, using any means necessary. Back at Hyunsu's room, Robin informs him about his vision and his abilities. Demonstrating his reconstitution and time interference skills, he fills the glass of water he just drank right back. Hyunsu asks for time from Robin to consider his offer as he belongs to the Red Lions and wants to discuss it with Ha Yurak first. The chairman accepts and heads out with Isaac. However, the latter comes running right back and leaps at Hyunsu, punching him. The latter blocks and the two begin to fight. Isaac seems to be no match for Hyunsu who renders him unconscious in one swift attack. What a pushover. Over with Night Nim. He is in agony as he is visited by Bishop Nim, there to rub salt in his wounds. After the teasing is over, she offers him help in return of a request of hers being fulfilled in the future, unconditionally. He accepts and she tells him of the Dark Spirit. It is a small terrorist group who is opposing the Portal Strategy Committee and have hired a high. A rank hunter named Black Thunder Henrik, who is as strong as S ranks, as their leader. Bishop Nim then tells Night Nim to listen to her plans carefully. Meanwhile, Hyunsu's clash with Isaac has left his building in tatters. His neighbors are outraged, but he takes responsibility, telling them that he messed up in training and that they will be compensated. Afterwards, Hyunsu is making Hyung Nim try out different delicious foods. This time, it's pizza. As they are enjoying themselves, the unconscious Isaac finally wakes up. Unable to believe he lost in such a fashion, the first singularity demands a rematch. Just then, Robin comes running in, making Isaac apologize to Hyunsu, and gets ready to leave. Before leaving, he tells the second singularity something that makes him all giddy. Hyunsu is officially registered as an S-rank hunter. He has come so far. Hyunsu's celebration is cut short, as Hyung Nim tells him to get back to training. The master informs his disciple about the heavenly demon's purpose, which is to kill the gods. Hyung Nim then demonstrates the six remaining heavenly techniques. Cloud Scattered Heavens creates explosive pressure with lightning while Black Crow Heavens is a flurry of powered melee attacks. Falling Heavens is high-speed flight with static and lightning heavens gathers that static into a massive bolt. Finally, Exploding Heavens creates a barrage of explosions, and Heavenly Spiritual Body envelops one in destructive energy. Hyung Nim's demonstration is over and Hyunsu is grateful that he is not his enemy. Raid Boss in real life. A week passes and Ha Yurek is finally awake. She is beating herself up over the loss of her comrades and her inability to save her, no longer being able to use her powers either. Lee Mina arrives and comforts her, informing her of Hyunsu's status and Robin's visit to him after the raid. Another two days pass and Hyunsu is out of the portal, having mastered lightning heavens. He gets to know of Ha Yurak's awakening and goes to visit her. Before though, he needs to wash his musty self. Along with his master, Hyunsu heads to a hot spring for a long overdue relaxation. Hyunsu meets with Ha Yurak and informs her about his status as a singularity. She informs him that the hunters are conflicted on relying on the singularities. The ones who agree with the reliance are willing to sacrifice others for it, while those like Hak Sen who don't want any part in that, 
branch off and create their own organizations. Hyunsu asks Ha Yurek what side she is on. She tells him that she wants to protect her comrades with her own hands. This strengthens his resolve to keep working hard towards getting ever stronger. Ha Yurek is happy and hugs Hyunsu. Wholesome, elsewhere, the Dark Spirit's leader, Henrik, holds a meeting to rally the troops. Afterwards, he is visited by Night Nim's remote illusion, disguised as a clown. He offers Henrik a partnership, offering him firepower. Meanwhile, a massive terrorist attack happens in Paris. Hyunsu's induction ceremony as Korea's second S-rank hunter takes place. Yoon, who has kept her promise to him, is visiting his brother, Park Hyun Ti in the hospital. Hyunsu meets her there after his ceremony, and is informed of Hyun Ti's fingers moving. Hyun Nim remarks that the severing heavenly language might have been a little effective. This leads to the disciple making an excuse to Yoon, asking her to make her special lunch box. She leaves the room and Hyunsu begins to execute the technique. However, the seal of the curse on Hyunsu's brother is even stronger than last time and Hyung Nim has to stop him before he damages Hyunti's body. Just then, a bright green light begins to glow in the latter's eyes. Meanwhile, Isaac is with Anderson and is training after having lost to Hyunsu. S rank number 4, Armand, arrives and asks the research chief to open a portal to Paris so that he can help against the now stronger Dark Spirits attack. Over in Paris, the terrorists are overpowering the hunters who have come to stop them. The latter are about to be killed but are saved by a mysterious interference. It is Armand, ready to join the fight. The day is saved, or is it? Armin seemingly kills all the terrorists there and then puts out the massive fires that have broken out. However, he is struck by a massive bolt of lightning. Henrik appears and challenges Armin to a fight. The latter doesn't think the former is a problem and gets ready. Just then, Armand is hit by a smoke bomb of sorts, rendering him unable to use his skills. Taking advantage of this, Henrik strikes him with another lightning bolt, rendering him unconscious. As he is about to land the finishing blow on Armand, Anderson intervenes. Claiming that his message is sent, Henrik escapes. What a coward. Back at the hospital, Hunti's body starts floating and he begins to utter a warning. It is of a great and inevitable evil that will run rampant and bring about death in its wake. Hearing of this leads Hyung Nim to tell Hyunsu about his encounter with the mysterious voice. The master tells his disciple that he sensed the holder of the voice to be as strong as himself but had no malicious intention. Hyung Nim warns Hyunsu that if someone like that decides to attack Earth, no one will be strong enough to fight him and so, he must be the one to protect them when the time comes. This realization hits Hyunsu well enough, and he vows to become strong enough to protect the entire world. Nothing like a good old end of the world for motivation. Following the terrorist attack in France and the fall of an S-rank hunter, tensions are running high. Hyunsu continues to train in the six remaining heavenly techniques with Hyung Nim, having bought the entire building now. Richie Rich back at it again. The latter wonders if the mysterious voice that separated him from his disciple in paradise was the one responsible for sending him to Hyunsu in the first place. Meanwhile, Ha Yurek hasn't regained her powers even after two weeks of losing them. Later, Lee Minna calls on Hyunsu to meet with the branch manager from the association. He is invited to be the leader of a new special terrorism squad, but he declines and offers his help as an individual instead. Hyung Nim is proud of his disciple as he thinks he did it to keep tabs. He didn't, he was just being nice. In the meantime, the terrorist organization has begun to move in Korea. The proclamation is made, hashtag Seoul will be a sea of fire, and hashtag after Paris. What are they? Social media influencers. At the Portal Strategy Committee's research office, Armand and Anderson have returned from France. The two wonder how the lowly terrorists got their hands on an item that can neutralize a hunter's abilities for 10 seconds. They think about the terrorist's next target and conclude that it will be the newest S-rank hunter, Park Hyunsu, in Seoul. Back in Seoul, preparations have begun for the impending attack. Five squads await the terrorists, including Lee Minna's team together with a cocky monk limb that can read fortunes, having predicted the outcome to be catastrophic. All of them will rally around the control tower, Hyunsu. Monk Lim can see Hyung Nim alongside the S-rank hunter and prostrates himself before the Great Spirit. He does have that effect on people. As they are about to post up, Armin contacts them and connects them to Chairman Robin. The latter tells the team to beware of the Dark Spirit and work with Anderson and Armin to fight off the threat. Just then, the terrorists begin their attack with a massive explosion in the city led by Henrik. Lightning McQueen back at it again. Anderson and Armin are observing the situation, along with the branch manager in charge of the special terrorism squad. 
They realize that the terrorists have completely changed their attack style from last time and are attacking several places in Seoul as teams. Anderson instructs all the hunters that are des rank to hold off from engaging and wait for Armin's help. Back in Seoul, Henrik and Hyunsu face off as Knight looks on from a safe distance. As the master disciple duo prepares to fight, the two wonder whether due to the nature of their martial arts, Henrik's ability neutralization marble will work at all. While the two are talking amongst themselves, their opponent is frustrated. Henrik charges up a lightning bolt of great magnitude and strikes Hyunsu with it. However, the latter easily avoids it and gets behind the former, sending him flying with the seed impact. Weak Bozo. Hyunsu comments that Henrik is still too weak to be considered S rank, making him furious. Elsewhere, an A rank hunter named Leopard grows impatient and engages. However, he is hit by the neutralization marble, which seals the powers of S rank hunters for 10 seconds, but for A rank, the effect lasts for one week. The hunter is killed. Why can't people just listen? As all hope seems lost, Armin arrives and takes out the terrorists in one swift strike. Meanwhile, Lee Minna and her team also engage and are about to get neutralized. Just then, Armin comes flying in and turns the marble to dust by compressing it with immense pressure using his powers. He also turns the terrorist to dust in one attack, making the spectators remark that S ranks are in an entirely different dimension. Back to Hyunsu, Henrik hits him with a neutralization marble and prepares to attack. However, the former is unaffected and beats the latter down. Knight, back at his full power, looks on and prepares to intervene, getting told by his underling to bring along the demonic sword of absolute death just in case. In the meantime, Armin arrives at his location to finish off Henrik, but finds him defeated. He is shocked at how Hyunsu didn't even break a sweat and finish off the latter. As Armin is thinking about the singularity's power, Knight appears in his true form. Looking like a literal beast, Knight proclaims that Hyunsu stands no chance against him. That seems awfully familiar, no. Armand, upon seeing Knight's true form, is surprised to find out that Hyunsu has already met with the organization that even Chairman Rubin wasn't able to dig information about. He charges at Knight to attack but is forced to shield himself instead. Armand is hit with a punch that shatters his shield and sends him flying, splitting the ground apart with its sheer force. He gets back up, vowing to not let Knight take the singularity. Just then, Knight launches a flurry of beams, just like the Sorcerer King's attack but even stronger. He is instructed by his underling to refrain from unnecessary destruction as that would anger King, so he stops. The attack has sent Armin into hiding. Coward behavior. However, Hyunsu has used the destruction, along with Heavenly Demon Soul Pursuit, to come up behind Knight and hit him with Tree Impact. However, the attack has no effect. Realizing that evolutionary realm techniques won't work on him, Hyunsu decides to fight him head on. The two's fists collide, sending shattering shocks all over the city. Armin tries to assist but is stopped and injured by Knight's umbrella holding underling. She then opens a portal, with the monster and hunter going through it so they can fight without holding back for the city. Armin is frustrated as he could be of no help. Don't worry man, they are just built different. Teleported to an empty village of sorts, Hyunsu and Knight resume their bout. Back in Seoul, the terrorists have been taken care of and Henrik is captured alive. The portal left behind is still open, but no one can enter. Meanwhile, Knight and Hyunsu are going at it. The latter strikes with seed impact kick but the former dodges and captures him. Stuck in the beast's clutches, Hyunsu uses Heavenly Demon Soul Shed and escapes, launching a counterattack. However, none of his current techniques work on Knight anymore and is sent flying through the sheds in the village. Hyunsu is not even able to catch his breath and is struck with another attack. Unable to keep up with the full-powered Knight's speed and power, he is frustrated. Just then, Hyung Nim tells Hyunsu to pull himself together and that his opponent is like a god against him right now. He tells his disciple use the second half of the heaven obliterating demonic fists, specifically used to kill gods. Makes sense. However, Knight is still too fast to hit for Hyunsu. In this desperate situation, acceleration, along with learning to instruction, activates. Following Hyung Nim's commands, Hyunsu brings forth endless internal energy, bursting in a bright blue light and speeding up immensely. Charging at him, he hits Knight with a massive punch that scatters the clouds, cloud-scattered heavens. Oh boy, it's about to go down. Hyunsu continues his barrage of attacks, using the second of the latter six techniques Black Crow Heavens to punch the living daylights out of Knight using multiple afterimages and energy. The latter's underling remarks that she wants to help but will only get in the way with how the two are right now. Drama Queen, never mind. She decides to watch on, holding on to the last resort, the demonic sword. 
Meanwhile, Hyung Nim is proud to see his disciple putting on the dominating performance with his new powers, not even giving Knight a chance anymore. Elsewhere, the king of the mysterious organization is informed that Park Hyun Soo has successfully been brought into their realm. Back to the fight, Knight is frustrated and flies off, sending a barrage of death beams downwards. Hyun Soo is unfazed and uses the second half's third technique, Falling Heavens, to easily avoid the attack and flies all over, creating static. His opponent gives up on capturing him alive and begins to charge a full-powered attack. However, Hyunsu doesn't give him a chance and uses the fourth technique, Lightning Heavens, to gather all the static created earlier. He then uses it to strike Knight down with a huge bolt of lightning. Bro has no chill right now. Before he can recover, Knight is hit with the fifth technique, Exploding Heavens, collapsing the sky itself and pushing him into the ground. In a rampage, Hyunsu is about to activate the sixth technique but something ominous stops him, capturing him in a black sphere, unable to move his body. It is Knight's underling, who has had enough and activated the demonic sword's absolute death. Hey, that's cheating. Hyunsu tries to break out using Heavenly Demon's stride but is unable to. Seeing his disciple struggle and falling unconscious, Hyung Nim tries to intervene but even his spiritual form can't get inside the death sphere. Okay, this isn't good. Meanwhile, Hyunsu wakes up in a mysterious place that looks like a graveyard. Mountains of corpses are all around and chains bind the demonic sword. About to touch one of the chains, Hyunsu is stopped by a mysterious gray-haired boy covered in magical markings. As the latter touches the former, his memories start flowing into him. Hyunsu sees an old sorcerer cursing the mysterious boy to be the harbinger of death for eternity, despite the latter crying at the thought and not wanting to. The boy refers to the person who cursed him as the strongest ever. Seeing these memories and hearing about the sorcerer, Hyunsu vows to help him out of the curse and grabs the chains, proclaiming that his master is the strongest in the world and that one day, as his disciple, he will surpass him. Hyunsu shatters the chains. The boy shakes hands with his savior and a blinding light surrounds the world. Is the day saved yet? Over with Hyung Nim, he is frustrated that he is going to lose his exceptional disciple in such a manner. All hope is lost as Hyunsu has stopped fighting back. Knight and his underling have seemingly won. Or have they? Just then, the sphere's dark energy vanishes and is converted into a blinding blue flash. Arising from it is a naked Hyunsu, covered in slash marks. On his right hand's index finger, he is wearing an ornament that looks like the demonic sword's grip. Itching to settle the score, Hyunsu has gotten even faster and hits Knight with a mana-infused tree impact, sending him flying. The latter's underling tries to help and pops countless spikes from the ground. However, Hyunsu confidently tiptoes around them all and comes up behind her. He shows him his new ornament, calling her out for torturing the kid and killing her with a powerful burst of energy. Desperate against his opponent, Knight consumes the immortal transcendent elixir. It will increase his strength three times but make him unable to move for a year afterwards. Knight is prepared for the consequences, but even this isn't enough. All of that, and for what? Hyunsu uses falling heavens to outmaneuver him, punching through Knight's body. His fist, along with his entire arm, is covered in a dark, dragon-like armor. The plot armor thickens. The earlier ornament is revealed to be an item named Halley, an ego ring of rank A+, plus, and level 1, that can level up to level 3 and rank S. As Knight lays on the ground defeated and unconscious, Hyunsu introduces Hyung Nim to the ring's true form, the young boy Halley. While the master is first skeptical with being associated with the manifestation of death itself, he comes around soon. Hyung Nim casts a spell on Halley, removing the scribblings on his body. The boy is overjoyed, as Hyunsu vows to save as many lives as the former was forced to take. As he wonders how he is going to head back, Hyunsu is told by Halley to use the umbrella left behind by Knight's underling. Back in Seoul, everyone is powerlessly looking on at the portal. Moments later, Hyunsu descends, holding Knight's body and his underling's umbrella that can create portals. He hands them over to Armand, who is shocked at how strong Hyunsu must have been to defeat the now unconscious monster. The former thanks him for his services. Armand also remarks that as Hyunsu is naked, the fight must have been intense. The latter, shocked, replies that he was so focused in the fight, he didn't even notice. Armin then comments that Hyunsu has nothing to be ashamed of in his uncovered areas but covers him up with his shirt as people will get there soon. No fair, let the people see his assets too. Reporters show up and poor Armin is completely foreshadowed by Hyunsu. As the rush dies down, Hyunsu is back at his apartment, waking up. Hyung Nim and Halley are watching the reports on the half-naked S-rank hero and tease him for not being able to flaunt his stuff off on TV. 
LOL. Hyunsu then orders a whole bunch of food as celebration for getting a new family member. The food arrives looking delicious, and the three feast together. Hyunsu and Hyungnam are having the time of their life eating fried chicken and Korean noodles. However, Halli feels left out. He is unable to eat worldly food. Hyung Nim tries to console him with spiritual food using a virtual item making technique material shift, failing horribly. Hey, at least he tried. Hyun Soo is glad to see that despite wanting nothing to do with the manifestation of death itself at first, Hyung Nim now treats Halley just like a grandchild. Reminiscing on his promise to his master, Hyun Soo vows to find him a way back to his world of Murum now that he is an S rank. Elsewhere, King in his original form is revealed to be the old sorcerer who entrapped Halley. He is unfazed at Knight's defeat and capture, as the latter knows better than to talk and is easily replaceable. The only thing King wonders is how Hyunsu was able to remove the fear he had instilled in the child. Someone tell this dude he messed with the main character. Meanwhile, Isaac, the first singularity, is torturing Knight, who refuses to talk. The former brags out his status as a singularity to the latter, making him burst out in a sinister laugh. Knight laughs at Isaac's proclamation of being a singularity. Hearing that he isn't even close to Park hyun Soo and is too weak to be one, Isaac loses it and is about to kill the former. My man was just speaking facts though. Just then, he is stopped by Robin. As Isaac leaves, Knight tells the chairman that he should have let the singularity kill him as King will come to save him soon. This time, Robin is the one laughing out loud. He remarks that he has seen countless versions of time through his power, and King didn't come to save Knight in any of them. Doctor Strange is that you? Having lost his hope, Knight mindlessly bursts out in laughter, calling out the name Newman. As Robin wonders what it means, the former explodes in his place. This sequence of events was not in any of the futures he foresaw. So, the chairman decides to use his power to go back in time and give Knight a swift death. Having created a future that couldn't possibly have been foreseen, Robin vows to find the rest of King's organization. Meanwhile, Hyung Nim awakens to the place he retreated to after he fell for a trap. There, he meets Kang Seo Il, his closest subordinate among the Ten Demons. The demon had fought off the enemies for Hyung Nim to buy him time, sacrificing his life in the process. The heavenly demon comforts his subordinate by telling him that his revenge was taken. Then, Kang Seo Il, proclaiming that they don't have much time, tells Hyung Nim to not hesitate when that day comes. As he vanishes, the heavenly demon wakes up back in Hyun Soo's apartment, shaken to his core. Hyung Nim, dreaming. What does this mean? In China, the premier is contacted by the chairwoman of the Black Dragon Society King Lan. She informs him on an impending event of the same level as the portal impact at the Tibet Plateau, telling the premier to keep it a secret for now. King Lan then begins to head to Korea. Meanwhile, Hyun Soo continues his training as he wonders King's true strength. Hyung Nim uncharacteristically compliments him for his efforts, weirding Hyun Soo out. Things go back to normal quickly after his reaction though. Later, King Lan has arrived and meets with Hyun Soo's branch manager. Being S rank number 3 at a whopping age of 77, she only gets younger with time due to the side effects of her power. How is this a side effect? King informs him of a portal at a dangerous S rank density of 82 in the Tibet Plateau, only allowing one man to enter at a time. As no one who went in comes back out, she asks if Park Hyun Soo participation can be made possible. Somewhere in China, a group conspires against the premier for not doing anything about the Black Dragon Society, holding both Yin and Yang powers. The groups are only allowed to hold either Yin or Yang powers but not both, so the conspirers consider it unfair. Moving strings behind the scenes in this group is one of King's pawns Chan. Meanwhile, Hyun Soo meets with King Lan and is told about the one-man missions. The latter offers him her full backing in his future endeavors if he demonstrates his powers as a singularity and can close the portal. Hyun Soo accepts and is told to bid his farewells as he might not come back alive. However, he is reassured by Hyung Nim, who believes in his disciple's capability. Two compliments so soon, is bro good. Elsewhere, King's organization holds a meeting. The pawns, Katrina, Salden, Chan and Bordo, argue over who is going to take over the knight position. Rook tells them that King had already decided and it's none of them, telling Bishop to fill the gap left behind for the time being. Talking alone with the latter, he tells her about Hyun Soo's arrival to the portal. Over to Hyun Soo, he arrives at the airport and is picked up luxuriously. Three days ago in China, the Trio Alliance Association met to discuss their plan against the Black Dragon Society. They were in power in the country before King Lan took over and have great hatred for her. Led by Chang Wuwei, the organization call themselves Greed and vow to get back its former glory. Blatant much. Presently with Hyun Soo, he does as King Lan instructed and bids his farewell to his bedridden brother. Later, he goes to meet with Ha Yurak. 
Her hair is redder than before, and she is slowly regaining her prowess. Ha Yurek makes Hyunsu promise to come back alive. With this, he finally heads to the Black Dragon Society's headquarters and sees an explosion on the way. Upon reaching, King Lan greets him in cutesy clothes and tells him the explosion was caused by greed and not to worry. She gives him an A, rank item, only one of its kind ever seen with mysterious effects, to take with him. Hyunsu reluctantly accepts the gift and moves out, carrying the item with a psychokinesis technique called Material Shift. Hyung Nim sees this and remarks in a panicked manner, if you do that at your current level. Do what? Hyung Nim has an emergency meeting with Hyunsu alone, telling his disciple that he activated a thought without his permission. The latter doesn't follow and is told that it may feel like his brain has become too. However, it has just awakened a part of it previously unused. Hyung Nim tells Hyunsu that if he can use this at a high level, he may achieve supreme peak level. To awaken these thoughts, the master tells his disciple to eat the elixir from earlier to increase his internal energy. Hyunsu does so and yang energy starts to flow in him. His perfect yin yang body rejects it. But with Hyung Nim's help, Hyunsu absorbs it safely, erasing his previous level 4 yin yang body. What awakens in its stead is the dormant level 0 heavenly demon body, increasing his physical abilities, as well as effectiveness of his mystic arts by 150%. Hyunsu also obtains a part of every heavenly demon's knowledge and has spiritual pressure now. Totally busted, no. The next day, Hyunsu meets with King Lan, who can't believe it's the same person from yesterday. She wonders if she should have consumed the elixir herself if its effects were that great. He requests King for a place to train and she takes him to her own personal training spot deep underground. Hyunsu demonstrates his newfound abilities, shocking King. However, his level 0 heavenly demon body has not yet acknowledged him fully, making him unable to completely control his output. Suffering from success, Hyung Nim informs his disciple that to use his newfound heavenly demon body, he needs to be deemed worthy by it. To do that, he needs to look into past memories of the heavenly demons and become worthy. Hyunsu follows his master's instructions and begins going through the demons, not being able to unlock the memories of the first nine is a level zero. He goes through the 10th to 26th, learning about the history of the mystic arts creation. As Hyunsu arrives at the 27th heavenly demon, Ryu Jang, he realizes that his energy techniques were far and beyond anyone before him. However, just like himself, Ryu wasn't able to control his exceptional internal energy at times. To overcome this, he developed the Heavenly Demon Mystic Circulation, making single cell in his body interact with his internal energy. Seeing this, Hyunsu attempts to recreate this, just like that. Meanwhile, the Pawn Chan introduces the Trio Alliance's leader to the Elixir Immortal Transcendent to help him against the Black Dragon Society. The leader tests it out on his underling and sees that a C rank was able to become an A rank with it. Ecstatic with the implications, he vows to rid the world of King Lan. Back over with Hyunsu, he has learned the energy circulation technique and is able to control his attack's output. Having achieved Heavenly Demon Body Level 1, he is now 170% stronger than just two days ago. Cheats have been activated. As this is going on, Chan meets with Bishop near the portal at Tibet Plateau that has reached Density 92, informing her that the C rank who ate the Immortal Transcendent died from the effects after 11 minutes. The pawn receives a remote from the Bishop. Using it, Chan can detonate anyone who consumes the elixir at will, erasing all traces of their involvement. Smart. Finally, Bishop commands the pawn to go prepare, Choi Yi Hyuk, the Aegis Guild leader that merged with the Sorcerer King's life essence. Combining the Heavenly Demon Body's black energy with mana, Hyunsu now bursts with azure energy. Hyung Nim applauds his disciple, making him emotional. Just then, greed begins its terrorist attack to draw out King Lan, calling out the Black Dragon Society. Chang Wu Wei demands a 100 billion yen ransom for the hostages in 30 minutes. Due to the domain detection mystic art, Hyun Su is aware of the attackers and heads out to save the civilians before King Lan. He arrives at the scene, and the sight of the dead enraged even Hyung Nim. The master tells his disciple to punish all who did it, activating his listening to instructions. Hyun Su begins his attack, as Chang orders all his subordinates to consume the immortal transcendent. The battlefield is filled with beasts now. However, it is all the same to Hyunsu, taking them all out in one blow. Seeing his prowess, Leader Chang decides to intervene and intakes the elixir. Rookie mistake. King Lan arrives at the battlefield and engages the Pawn Chan. Over with the Greed Leader, he has transformed into a flaming beast and begins to run rampant. 
Hyunsu, using material shift, forms huge spiritual hands and begins to evacuate the civilians. Chang charges at them but is stopped by his opponent using heavenly demon mystic arts conceptualization, falling heavens, dropping energy made objects from the sky. Hyunsu also uses his own technique domain, using mana combined with the mystic arts, to shield the civilians. Finally, he uses root impact to extinguish the flaming monster Chang. Rip Bozo. Meanwhile, King Lan is overpowering Chan. Desperate, the latter turns into his true beast form and begins to attack. Just as King is about to use her ability to fight back and become younger in the process, Hyunsu intervenes, proclaiming there's no need for her to do so. He strikes the pawn down with leaf impact. Using Hallie's stage 1 gauntlet transformation, Hyunsu is about to finish Chan off but is stopped by King as he is to be captured alive. Meanwhile, Bishop is getting briefed about the outcome. She talks of a war against the strong warriors of planet Ares and how there will have succeeded on Earth. Bishop speaks of Anderson as Albaza and mentions Newman, the same name Knight called Robin with before dying. Reminiscing about these names has her in doubt but is assured by Rook as they have King. Is that even reassuring though? Afterwards, Chan is being experimented on by Anderson, who has managed to create a clone from his sample. He has also analyzed the umbrella obtained from Knight's underling and perfected the portal-making technology. Moments later, King Lan tells Robin about Hyunsu's growth. She tells him that he has already surpassed Haxum, making him wonder if he is ready to surpass that. However, Robin holds his thoughts as that might be too dangerous, and they need to be careful. King Lan and Robin bid farewell, as the former prepares for the Tibet portal raid. Finally, equipped with A, rank Black Dragon Cannon, A, rank Reflection, B, rank Invisible Shield and the A, plus rank Clear Items, Hyunsu makes his way into the portal. King Lan once again reminds him to come back alive as she looks on. Hyunsu arrives at a forest and is attacked by a mystical fox creature, who looks like a kid. She is stronger and faster than him and wants him out of there. The fox creature overpowers him with but the impact of her voice. Those must be some strong vocal cords, damn. Hyunsu tries to fight back, making use of the invisible shield and black cannon. He also uses acceleration, followed by falling heavens and lightning heavens, but all to no avail. The only thing Hyunsu is able to achieve is anger her further. The latter launches a flurry of slashes at the former and connects, injuring him. However, there seems to be a misunderstanding as the fox creature is mad at Hyunsu for stealing her forest. But he just arrived there. Your honor, my client is innocent. Just as the mystical fox creature is about to finish off Hyunsu, Halley's reflect damage activates. He is fully recovered, while all the damage on him is transferred to her. That's cheating. Suddenly, she transforms from her orange-haired kid form to a white-haired woman one. The seven-tailed fox woman overpowers Hyunsu and puts him on deathbed. Falling, he activates the A-plus item clear and is back on his feet. Hacks mode on. Hyunsu activates the sixth of the latter techniques, heavenly spiritual body, charging at the creature. She launches a beam at him in defense. At the end of the clash, both are covered in wounds. However, the fox creature is enraged and her eighth tail comes out. Meanwhile, Hyunsu activates Halley's gauntlet transformation, cladding his arm and increasing his stats. He then imitates Hyung Nim's heavenly spiritual body using his special skill. The fox woman stands no chance against it and is finally defeated. Hyung Nim instructs Hyunsu to finish the fox create off for good, as a threat like her being released into the world could mean its end. He is about to comply but hears her mumble, don't kill it, the forest belongs to me and Ryan. A while back, this fox creature, Iris, peacefully lived with her sister Ryan in the forest. However, they were attacked by Bishop and her underlings. The conniving woman took Iris's sister hostage and trapped her inside the portal for Hyunsu to encounter. What a buy. I mean bad woman. Back to the present, Hyunsu decides to heal Iris using clear, despite still being injured himself. As she comes to, he explains the situation to her, the latter finally having calmed down. Hyunsu scans the area using domain, determining its size to destroy it to get out. Meanwhile in the present, 20 days have passed in the outside world as two hours go by in the portal. Bishop wonders why the portal hasn't been destroyed as it was supposed to with Hyunsu's loss. Thinking something is amiss, she heads in, taking an armor-cladded Choi with her. Back to Hyunsu, he asks Iris how long her eight-tailed form will last. As she answers, eight minutes, he gathers all the internal energy, mana and conceptualization possible, concentrating it in one attack, as per Hyung Nim's instructions. Activating Halley in his own full power, Hyunsu proclaims true heavenly spiritual body. As he does so, beam of bright blue launches out of his arms into the sky. Following the attack, a crack begins to appear in the sky. Afterwards, Hyunsu unlocks unique conceptualization, 
mind destruction, shocking Hyung Nim. As they begin to head inside, the former tells Iris to turn into her eight-tailed form as there could be met with a threat. She does so and while they are flying, kisses Hyunsu on the lips as a present and heads in first. Bro is the Rizzler. Suddenly, Iris is slashed and is bleeding buckets. The attacker is none other than the armor-cladded Choi, holding a mysterious sword. Enraged, she rushes at him but is met with countless swords in the sky. All at once, they fall at her, ripping Iris apart. Having reverted to her normal form, she crashes into the ground. Hyunsu rushes to her aid and asks the attacker his identity. Hyung Nim tells him that the latter is someone they have met before. Just then, Bishop appears and introduces herself. As she is busy chit-chatting, Hyunsu puts Halley on Iris's finger and activates damage reflection onto Bishop and Choi. He then rushes at the latter and strikes him, blowing his mask off, realizing his identity. Choi is like a zombie, only being driven by revenge. Hyunsu defeats him once again using Leaf Impact, sending him flying. What a pushover. Iris has fully recovered and flies towards the portal with Hyunsu. However, Bishop is back and charges at the two. Seeing this, Hyunsu throws Iris towards the portal, telling her to survive. Bishop attacks Hyunsu. The latter is unfazed and activates his unique conceptualization, mind destruction. Combining it with rude impact, he shatters her attack. Bishop retreats into a portal, but Hyunsu uses Domain to find out her next location. Using Heavenly Demon Flight to reach her there, he strikes Bishop with Seed Impact as she is coming out of the portal, connecting. Hyunsu then proceeds to charge up Exploding Heavens. Equal rights, equal fights. Bishop calls on all the vengeful spirits that have died in the portals to attack Hyunsu. Just then, Halley tells the latter that he will handle it. Being absolute death, he holds total power over the dead and frees the spirits from their misery. Having nothing left, Bishop shields herself but is struck by falling heavens, then exploding heavens. As Hyunsu tells him that she is weaker than Knight and Iris, Bishop calls on Ron Bell, her butler, to get rid of Hyunsu. He arrives and begins to launch a flurry of punches at Hyunsu. Simp. Outside the portal, Yoon visits Hyun T but finds him missing. Meanwhile, Iris is trying to navigate her way through the darkness but is attacked by Rook. Her attacks aren't working, and the latter is blackmailing her with her sister. Just then, Hyun T's body appears there and using force teleportation to send away Rook. He then gives Iris a guiding light that will take her back to her sister. What is happening? Back to Hyunsu, Ron Bell is overpowering him in close range combat. Being unable to do anything at that range, he uses a mana bomb to gain some distance. This is a ploy by Bishop to stall Hyunsu and recover. However, Hyung Nim recognizes it and tells his disciple not to waste time on him. Hyunsu follows and sends Ron Bell away with falling heavens and appears before Bishop, striking her. Powerless before Hyunsu, she is ruthlessly sent flying. At the Portal Strategy Committee's research office, Robin, Sherry and Anderson celebrate Isaac's birthday. The chairman talks about God with his disciple, telling him that he once met him before. Telling the singularity that the time is right, Robin hands Isaac a mysterious sword. Why now? Back inside the portal, Bishop brings out the immortal transcendent, but trips and drops it. Disgusted at this pathetic display, Hyunsu strikes her down with exploding heavens. Seeing this display, Ron Bell doesn't wish to get involved and runs away. Afterwards, Hyunsu's listening to instructions levels up. However, Hyung Nim also gets a special skill this time around, possession. Only once, he will be able to possess Hyunsu's body with all his skills, after which his existence will disappear from this world. Hyung Nim wonders if that is what his subordinate CO Il told him in his dream about the day to not hesitate. As Hyunsu wonders about Iris, Hyung Nim assures him that she is happy and unharmed wherever she is. He then heads out, making a portal using an item left behind by Bishop. Outside, King Lan is waiting for his arrival. Hyunsu appears from a new portal and is greeted with a hug from her. The two portals then close, as his mission is successful. King Lan informs Hyunsu that one month has passed while he was away. He is also told that his brother Hyunti finally woke up and that the rank number one chairman of the portal strategy committee, Robin, passed away a day ago. Oh, that's why. Elsewhere, Isaac cries, mourning his master's death. Before his death, Robin came across King. The latter referred to him as Newman, telling him that he will be the one to kill him in this world as well. Robin is prepared to take King down even if it costs him his life. However, he is defeated and only his bones are left behind. As his last act in this world, Robin gave Isaac a pep talk to believe in himself and not be consumed by revenge as he has limitless potential. Does he though? 
Meanwhile, Hyunsu excitedly goes to meet his awakened brother. Though, he soon finds out that it is not actually Hyun T, but Mare, the god of planet Ares. The god reveals that he is keeping Hyunsu's brother alive right now. King is the one who put the curse on Hyun T, being the culprit behind the portal impact. Mare then tells Hyung Nim that he is the one who transported his spirit to this world as it was separating from the body. Finally, the revelations. Revealing the past of his planet, Mare shows all the people of Ares possess special abilities, the same ones the people of Earth now possess. Due to this, the planet was always at war, this time, it was just against King. Newman was somehow able to unite all 11 factions on Ares with the help of Paul, known as the commander of the S-rank hunters on Earth, and ha Urax boss, Choi Sangho. Under Paul, Newman and the others began fighting back against King. They were succeeding, until Queen began to move. She was a living weapon made for destruction, from the cells of the four ancient kings and the current king. Not even Karak, Haxon's counterpart and the fiercest of them all, was any match for her. Taking owls in two worlds takes some skill. As Newman retreated, he met Mare. Upon the former's inquiry, the latter told him that he is responsible for only the manifestation of their abilities and can't directly help him. Mare also told him that a transcendent being backs King and his forces. Depressed at the thought of not being able to get his revenge, Newman begs Mare for a way to continue their will. With this, the god of Ares promised Newman his people might not get happiness ever again, but they will have their revenge. Mare then tells Hyunsu that singularities are created in this world by him and are variables that didn't exist in Ares. He traversed numerous dimensions so Hyung Nim could meet Hyunsu and Isaac could receive the sword. Mare also reveals that had he not saved his brother, even if just by name, Hyunsu would have unalive himself. The latter asks whether the prophecy about the singularities saving the world is true, and the former tells him that it's his desire that he hopes to be true. Elsewhere, the sword asks Isaac if power is what he wants. Wait, what? The sword talks. The demonic sword among demonic swords makes Isaac sign a bloody contract for revenge against Robin's killer, cladding him in darkness. Armin comes in and is shocked to see Isaac like this. Proclaiming his revenge, Isaac vanishes into the air. Oh no, this never ends well. Meanwhile, Hyunti is back to rest and Mare tells Hyunsu before leaving that he will wake up soon naturally. Having most of his questions resolved, Hyunsu goes out to tell the others about what he learned. He meets ha Yurek, who has regained her powers and has her hair back to normal. The two then meet with all the S-ranks before Robin's funeral. Haxon wonders just how strong Hyunsu has become. The latter then briefs everyone about Mare, the god of Ares, and what he learned from him. Finally, Hyunsu is about to reveal why King has come to Earth of all places. The reason is. Psych, find out in the next part.